Hello fans, welcome to another vlog. So I wanted to go away and fix my sleeves and then come back and tell you how I did it, but I got so much feedback telling me, oh, but we're also learning so much by watching you suffer miserably. <laughs> that I thought I would show you what my plan is at least right now and I'll go execute it and tell you how it went. But okay, so what I did was I went and got Watson pattern. Where is Watson's pattern? So I went and got Watson. This is the pattern for Watson. It is TV 466. And I had previously made adjustments to this pattern already. So, and I know that the sleeves went in okay and I liked the arm sigh and I liked all that stuff. So, all right. So this is Watson's adjusted pattern. The arm sigh has been adjusted. And this is the pattern I'm working with. And if you lay them on top of each other at this point right here, you can see how different that arm sigh is. But this point that's right here and this point right here actually meet at the exact same spot. I did go measure the back of this mock-up so all the other pieces combined and the arm sigh hole. And that was eight inches. And I measured the back of what is Watson. And that is nine inches. So that hole is in fact bigger. But I will remind you that I made this pattern an inch bigger anyway. Like actually more than an inch. So like actually it ended up being like an inch and something. So I think the holes are actually going to end up being essentially the right size. So what I'm doing here is I pinned this bodice and I like all the rest of it. Like it fits fine. So I drew it and outlined it just with a pencil. And then the parts I don't want, I did in dashed line, as you can see here. So then I'm going to take this pattern and I'm going to pin it in. And I am going to draw this pattern in and then I'm going to cut the resulting line. The sleeves are also different between the two and I have adjusted sleeve patterns that are different sizes. The current pattern that I'm using, here, here are those. And they've also had a little bit of, um, like the top is the same size, but I've narrowed the bottom of the, the armhole, which is something that made me happier about Watson's. And it's already marked to have the cuffs that I want anyway, so I'm just gonna use those same cuffs. So currently, this is my plan. I started cutting, but then I was like, oh, I should show them. This is how different the shape of the arm size is between the one I like. And remember how there's all that bunchy stuff in the, the front of mine? That's having to start to take out. There there it is. So we'll see how this works. I don't I don't know if it's gonna be successful. I've never done it this way, but just remember if you switch out your sleeves, you need to make sure your arms arm size can accommodate the size of that sleeve and that all your pieces, like the total number of inches should like work out. Or at least be close like this one has a little bit of pleating at the top so it has a little bit of fudge okay so this is all already giving me hope this will not fit me because i do not have my corset on and i have a bra on that has padding and my measurements are entirely different as we know um but this hole looks pretty badass and it fits in a good way around this zone which is was being problematic before so I'm pleased the sleeve head is pretty high which I also enjoy um, someone mentioned like oh this neck needs to be trimmed down well first of all it's gonna have a collar on it so it already will get trimmed down a half an inch but I might take an additional half an inch out of this because it is like <laughs> I mean it it wraps across itself pretty well but like it's pretty high so I might be taking that out but the, that is a minor adjustment and can be done way later so I'm not that worried about it but it's looking pretty good um, I think everything that I think about it will be handled also by some boning I should figure out what boning I will need based on this but I'm gonna put a sleeve in and see how that goes I have victory so I have a sleeve with a slightly ruffled edge, you can see, uh, just a little bit of poof, and 
I'm trying to hold it so you can see it properly, but that is not going to work. Anyway, it looks good. It's not pulling on me. I have room for my elbow without it looking too bizarre in the back. There's not too much poof, but there's just a little bit. And when there's like layers of silk and stuff, it will puff up a little bit more. So it looks good in the back to me. I'm happy with it. I'm running with this sleeve. <laughs> that is decision number one. Okay, so that makes me real excited. Woo -woo. So this vlog, I'm going to try to prep my fabric. So that means cut it, flatline it, get the lining cut, figure out and prepare the piping, get all the edges zigzagged, do all that stuff. If I get anything done beyond that, up to and including sewing any part of this bodice, we're going to call that a giant win, but extra. So compassionate deadlines, friends. Do you remember when I was like, yeah, I'm going to be working on this for about a month at the beginning of August. It's October. I'm like, mm, if I get it done by the end of November, I'm going to be real hype. <laughs> so um, when I tell people I sew slowly, this is what I mean though. But I mean, part of it is because like I do other things in my life and I don't sew every single day and I give myself a break when I want to and I don't ever try to power sew. Like, okay, I do. Occasionally I will try to power sew and I always like regret that. So I am, I'm pretty pumped on this, that it worked. So, woo woo. I may go as extreme as putting my corset on to try it all on together so I can pin it and make sure it all looks good. So that might happen, but if that happens, it will happen tomorrow because it is 2.30 in the morning and I am not feeling it. <laughs> so I will perhaps do that manana and then I will start the great fabric prep. We're getting close guys, like once the fabric's prepped for a bodice though, and I figure out how to insert piping, which doesn't look that bad, honestly, um, then the construction, actual construction of it isn't too bad. Except I'm looking at this like giant line of buttons and it's reminding me of Watson buttons. Like that's a lot of buttons. That's a lot of buttons. But I will burn that bridge when I get there. I also have button molds so I can make a lot of buttons. That fabric's really thin though. I kind of wonder what it would look like over, like do I need to back the fabric before it goes on the button and does that affect how the button gets made? <sighs> Nightmare. So I will figure that out later though. <laughs> that is future Noelle's problem. For now, I have dealt with today Noelle's problem and I am retiring from the atelier. <laughs> Hello! Today is the great day of cutting. My husband is making dinner and watching the Ghostbusters, so if you hear noises from downstairs, that's what that is. I am gonna cut some of my interlining, which I just happen to have a, like a large bolt of because Christine uses this same twill. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Um, you're not really supposed to cut interlining for the sleeves. I am moderately concerned that my sleeves will look a different color because the red fabric is so thin so I need to check that out before I cut my inner lining and then I'm gonna wash and dry it real quick um, even though it's never gonna get laundered so it doesn't really need to get pre-washed but I'm gonna do it anyway just in case because also I might sweat all over it it could shrink I don't know this fabric is the the tissue fabric that goes on top is so like squidgy weird anyway I might as well do it so I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'm gonna cut out all the rest of the fabric. I'm also gonna cut a pattern piece for the bodice that actually just is the pattern piece I want so that I don't have to keep sort of guessing at Franken patterning that pattern piece. I'll just do it once and then they will all at least be the same. So I'm gonna do all that and take you along for the ride. Okay, tool has been ripped. I'm gonna zigzag the edges and throw that in the wash. I've decided that the sleeves are going to get lined, but they're going to get lined in silk organza because that will be much thinner and lighter than this twill, which is pretty friggin' heavy, but that'll give it some structure. Okay, this came today, which is also fabrics-store.com linen. God, I swear to God, I'm not um, <laughs> getting paid by them. Um, so this is handkerchief weight linen, and um, a friend of mine on Instagram said oh she got some of this and it was actually six dollars and 78 cents or something ridiculous so this is handkerchief weight linen 3.5 ounces per
per yard, I guess. I guess that's what that measurement is. The other linen I showed you was 5.1 ounces, I think, or 5.3, but something in that neighborhood. So this is definitely thinner, as you can see from me. It's very, like, stiff right now. It definitely needs to be washed, but it's pretty, and it will make some lovely things someday. I just want to put it away, so that's why I'm showing it to you now. Okay, this guy is washed and pulled back on grain because this stuff is off grain too. Rad. This is a normal thing, apparently. I don't have this happen very often, actually, but here we are. Um, now I'm going to make the pattern, and I'm also going to make, just make a copy of those sleeves to put in this pattern envelope so that I don't have to be like, what sleeves go with this whole, you know, like, that's dumb. So I'm just going to make this work <laughs> so that... Uh, we can make sure that um, we have it for next time when next time we want to use this and I kind of do that as a as a thing so I'm also going to copy the cuff pattern for this this pattern Alrighty, friends, I'm pretty sure you guys do not want me to be filming a 25 minute time lapse that will encapsulate the next three hours of me cutting out three sets of this fabric, which will include one lining, one interlining, and one of the fashion fabric. Sometimes the lining is going to switch fabrics, sometimes the interlining is going to switch fabrics, so. It's all kind of chaos, so I'm going to assume you don't want 25 minutes of just me speed cutting because someone is going to come in the comments and go, yes, I do want that, but I'm going to be like, no, can't have it, mine, it's my channel. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not going to film that because it's just ridiculous, but I'll be back when that's all done um, and then I will flatline and then I will make piping and then I will figure out how to sew piping. <laughs> I just like saying piping.
Oh my god, so Hannah sent me a link to this Etsy seller who's selling the world's smallest scissors. Look at, these are in a tiny holster. They're actually amazingly sharp. They are great th uh, thread snips, actually. So I'm going to put them in my whatever hasif it is that I make for me. So I'm hype on these. They're super cute. They were heckin' expensive for tiny, tiny scissors, but actually valid scissors that are this cute and this tiny. Yeah, okay. Okay, here is... Uh, one set of lining, one set, of, one set of lining goes this way, one set of inner lining goes this way, and then the regular fabric is all there and ready to be sewn. So I'm gonna prep tomorrow, hopefully, the um, regular fabric to the interlining. I'm gonna go ahead and interline, as it were, and then I'm gonna prep the lining fabric by zigzagging the edges on that as well. And then I'm thinking about piping after that. Also at some point here I need to measure the boning for this guy and make sure I have it available slash ordered or whatever and then also potentially measure how much piping I need. So I gotta figure out essentially where I want my piping. So I'm thinking about all those things. Uh, tomorrow's a big day though. I'm recording a podcast with Morgan. I'm also recording 20 questions with Rebecca. And I want to get all this stuff done that I just talked about. And I think I have a couple other things to do that have nothing to do with sewing. So it's going to be a big day and kind of busy. And here's hoping. So it's um 4.40 in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and go to bed. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Hello. So it's midnight. And I'm just getting started working today. Cool. That's kind of a lie. Um, when people tell you that YouTubing is a full-time job, it's legit. So I went to bed, as you know, at 5 o'clock last night. Probably didn't get to sleep till like maybe 6.30 or so. Um, woke up today at like 1.30, ate some stuff, did some stuff like housework stuff. Started about 3.00. I filmed a video, a 20 questions with Rebecca Mayton. Um, I had to prep for that. I had to prep for a podcast record with Morgan. So I prepped for those things for like, that probably took me like an hour and a little bit. Then I did something in here. Oh, I set up for the podcast and stuff. So that took me until five o'clock. So from three to five, I did prep and then set up. And then I recorded with Rebecca for an hour. And then I went downstairs and I'm making soup today, which is delicious. Oh, it already tastes so good. I'm so excited about it. And then I talked to my husband for a little while. Morgan and I started filming at 7. No, recording a podcast at 7. It was the podcast for the most recent two Dresden Files. We have two hours of podcast footage because we were just like going off. Like this, if you're going to... Why, re listen to that podcast it is not spoiler free like we spill all of the dish so <laughs> if you care about spoilers that's not the one until you're done <laughs> um but we were on the phone until 10 then I went for a walk with my husband and ate some dinner um I did have like I think basically lunch at six o'clock also like between Rebecca and Morgan and then I sat around watching YouTube videos for the last like hour and so it's midnight and I'm just gonna now start sewing. So like I've already been like working for seven hours, although to be fair, there were breaks, like that was just a break. Um, well, from three to 10 was the seven hours and then I had food and a break and I'm gonna work some more. <laughs> so when you don't think that these things are a full-time job, they are, as a matter of fact, a full-time job and I am just now realizing that and this is something I do on the daily. So I'm going to take these guys and turn them into those guys with zigzag edge. <laughs> I actually have to um, flatline also and zigzag. And then I will have met my goals for those for this week. And then I have to look at piping too. Um, I have all this equipment here that I need to clean up. So I'm going to do that real quick and then start the zigzag session and the flatlining and hopefully get that done tonight so that I can tackle piping tomorrow and I can feel successful about this vlog. <sighs> so 
Yeah, I love I love how complicated everything has become because I'm taking on too many tasks. Fun times. Okay, this set of lining pieces is done. I think I'm gonna go. I think what I'm gonna do is flatline these guys and then zigzag them together. So there's not two layers of zigzag, but just one. So it'll add less because it does add like you know bulk to the edge. So I'm gonna start on that. I'm gonna start with the sleeves since they're a silk organza and see how that goes. I did burn that last night. It is silk organza. So I am it when I iron it, it smells weird. And I was like, why does it smell weird? And then I was like, I'm gonna burn it just to make sure. Nope, it's silk. So here I go. So for people who are interested, I am reading Once Upon a Time in the North by Philip Pullman. It is like a prequel short story to his Dark Materials, and it's about when Lee Scoresby meets Yorick Bernison in the North, and how they become friends and get to know each other. I like it a lot so far, but I really like the Golden Compass and the Amber Spyglass and the Subtle Knife. That book series is a... It's a weird one for me because when I was reading it, I didn't know if I liked it, and it took until I was done to realize that I liked it. Okay, so I've got one of these done, um, and how, I mean, I need to zigzag around the edge, but how I do it is I pin only one edge, and then I just sew straight across that edge. Cool. I iron it flat. I pin another edge, usually at a 90 degree, sew that, iron it. Then I do this one, sew that, iron it. It's a lot of steps and it sucks, but it gets my flat line really flat and without too much bubble. There's like always a little bit. Also, there this is uh, silk organza, so there's always like a little weird bump in it. You can never get it perfect. I don't, I don't know what the perfectest trick to get it absolutely perfect is, but this is real freaking close. And like, I can see bubbles on the camera, but I can't really see them in person. So. This is as close to perfect as I can get it. So this is how I do it. Okay, so I'm moderately annoyed because there is a run and, and I don't know how it's not in the exact same spot. Oh, I guess it is if you go like this. It just doesn't end up on the same spot on the sleeve head. I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. No, I guess it does. Anyway. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Anyway, I found this run right there. That is highly annoying. It's highly annoying because I do not want to re-cut this. I don't want to reline it. I don't want to have to redo all this stuff because of that stupid thing. But it's also annoying. And I also don't want to waste the fabric. So I'm grumpy about this right now. Okay, I'm gonna zigzag the edge of this one. This one's done, just to like, so it's done in case I do decide to keep it, but I'm reserving the option to possibly recut that one. Ugh, I'm annoyed. All right, I've decided I'm not worrying about it because like this is the main front of the bodice piece and you can see these like, I don't know, can you see these? Like, it's just bizarre fabric. It's like striped sort of. There's also like another like almost run here and here. So I'm just over it. <laughs> it is what it is. This is what it looks like. Everybody's gonna cope. That's how it is. Okay, so it's 4.30. I've been working fairly solidly. I have gotten done the lining and I have flatlined the main front bodice pieces and the two sleeves pieces, so four, four total plus two is six. I have those two, no, there's three pieces left. I think I'm gonna save them for tomorrow. It's 4.30, I'm slow. This is taking forever and I'm exhausted and I don't really wanna make this future Noel's problem, but I'm going to, so no regrets. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I have bestie call tomorrow. So I'm talking to my best friends at three for an hour or two, and then I have more glorious sewing to do, and that's my whole day, so woo, I'll do that. Hello, it is the next day, and it is um, six. 
I had bestie chats today and then I had to do some prep and some housework so this is where we're at so I am going to finish flatlining these and then I can figure out the piping situation which I think I just need to make like one more set of piping and then decide and then measure everything to figure out how much I need and then I'm good um so I heard you like a montage so I'm gonna uh, do a little time lapse for you of how I flatline these things because people are interested in this stuff. Alright, everything is prepped. It is five hours, one dinner, one very uncomfortable conversation with a group of nine people about racist issues. <laughs> Later, I have this done. <laughs> so, whoa. Now I'm going to watch the video about how to... Now I'm going to watch the video about how to make double piping again. Um, and then I will try to make more double piping. And we will see which one we like. And then I will do measurements to see how that's going. Hello, welcome to tomorrow. <laughs> Are we enjoying my headband look? I feel like 15 year old Noelle, but I, I slept with my ponytail in and I like never do that. And now my scalp hurts. So I'm like hair down day, but I need it out of my face. So that's how we got the headband today. I'm kind of into it though. Let's bring it back the 90s for me. Before I get into that, I thought I would take a minute to tell you that this video is very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. For those of you who don't know about Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can pop into Skillshare and search literally thousands of videos by creative professionals and other creative people. They cover topics from design to illustration to photography to bookkeeping to sewing, and that's just really scratching the surface. They focus on courses that are made for real life and often focus on getting you prepped and running without spending countless hours on parts of the process that you don't need. This allows you to get the information that you need and then move your creative journey forward quickly. The best part of this is that you pay around $10 a month for this service and then you have a premium account with unlimited access to all of the amazing courses. When I partnered with Skillshare, I dove right in with a class on Photoshop. I've been using Photoshop for most of my adult life, but in a very limited capacity. I wanted to get back to the nuts and bolts of the program and see what it really could offer me so that I could flex my creative muscles a bit more. I chose a class called Fundamentals of Photoshop, Drawing, Layers, Masks, and Selections, which was taught by Meg Lewis. I absolutely adored this course because Meg taught me some of the fundamental elements of Photoshop in a very easy to understand way. She was clear and concise and she explained what the purpose of each tool was as well as several different ways to do the same thing in the program, which really allows for people to find the route that they prefer. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. After that, it's only around $10 a month. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okie dokie. Let's have a refresher on what's happening with the piping. So I've made a bunch of samples of piping already. Um, I have, well, let's start with this. I had four millimeter ish this is five thirty seconds cord and it is super fat and feels like this would be fantastic for a cushion on a sofa so not victorian so no this is three millimeter and it's getting better and i'm i'm digging it but still not really victorian like eh rolled over here to butcher twine so this is just like if you looked up butcher twine this is what you would get and that's two millimeter and I also have some some more white here and that's this and that I'm liking a lot more I, I have been as you can see trying with both three up and double piping so so far I like the double piping the best uh, but Constance was like you know well the Victorians were super fiddly and the more tedious and tiny they could make something, they would. So, this is one millimeter cord. <laughs> just, it's crazy to just keep trying to go smaller and smaller. Like, this felt really small. But we're gonna, we're gonna try with this. Because, let's see what it looks like, right? So, I have been watching my trusty YouTube video on making double piping. Which, you can kind of just make double piping and then stick it onto another single piping and you get a triple piping. So I will link this video down below for you guys if you want to watch it. It, I gotta warn you, it's not in English. <laughs> it's in, I don't know if it's Hindi, it's in some language that the accent sounds, 
maybe somewhere in that region of the world. Um, but uh, this guy shows you how to do it, and I mean, you don't really need words. You can just watch him. You'll go, oh, yeah, that's how you do it. So um, I'll link that down below for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and try and make double piping with this and see what it looks like. I'm going to see if I have enough random fabric scraps in my scrap bin to make it out of the actual colors that it would be in. And if not, I might cut some fabric to do that with. But just see if I have enough to make bias for a sample. Alright, so I do have scraps of red and of course black. I don't have gold, but I'm going to go make some. I'm not going to worry about it being bias piping for the sample because, like, it's just a sample and <laughs> it's not going to curve. So I just need to see if the colors look good and stuff. So I'm going to go try that. Oh, wow, Charlotte has appeared. Everyone has been asking for other cats other than Keanu. Charlotte! She's like, I'm not supposed to be in here, but I'm in here. What am I doing? Charlotte, don't come here. This kitty is known as the Tiny Terror. She looks like a little kitten, but she's not. She's actually gone. Uh, anyway, she is not a kitten. She is actually two and a half years old. She's just very, very small. She only wears six pounds. Hi, baby girl. Also, she runs this household, so don't let her size fool you. She is a tiny little monster, and we love her so much, and she's so fluffy. I thought we could have chats while I cut, but I don't really know what to chat about, honestly. Things have been weird, like weird, weird. Many uncomfortable conversations. Really uncomfortable conversations. <laughs> um, the track that this closet door is on lost its mind one day and decided to just like open up and let the closet there's like i don't even know how to explain this there's like a a circle that runs in a track and the track just like opened up and lets the circle out and i bent the thing back and whatever but like this door comes off if i try to shut it so at some point we're gonna have to have a handyman over <laughs> and i i'm like okay i mean I guess that's okay. You can have workmen in your house as long as everyone's masked and like you're not hanging out in the same spot as them and it's not so hot anymore. I can leave the, the window open. Man, though, it was like 95 degrees last week. It's finally cooling down to like low 80s and I'm pretty pumped about that. So it's getting better. Fall is coming, but it was really trying hard not to. Where is my ruler? Oh, it's on, underneath this. Okay, so if I have one millimeter that and I need to make half an inch so I should make this an inch and a quarter let's just run with that and see what happens I think I'm probably gonna be all over the place so if you're sewing enjoy the chats <laughs> and if not I'm sorry I'm doing this thing so hopefully you're not offended by me sort of wandering around while I'm talking to you this is the inch mark, not the inch and a quarter mark, no all. Get a grip. Okay, cool. We have regained our grip. So, I am dying to know how you guys are. I don't know why I feel like I ha we haven't had chats in a while. We probably have, and I just, like, forgot about it. I feel like it's been a long time since, like, I even put out a video, but that's not true, because I put one out last week. I don't know where my brain is at. I think it's because I'm releasing these 20 questions with videos also, so there's a surge of commentary from you guys that comes with um, a video, and then there's another surge of commentary that comes with those kind of videos, but that commentary is completely different. So I've had like all this input that I would normally get once a week, and I've actually had it twice a week, so it just maybe makes that week seem twice as long in YouTube time. I don't even know what I'm talking about. What does that even mean, Noelle? <laughs> what else has been going on? I asked this fun question on my Instagram stories today, which was, what is the one thing, or name one thing that you've done during COVID that you're super proud of? And man, did I get all the feels. <laughs> a 
Holy cow, people said some amazing things. I mean, some people said some things that seem super mundane also, but I'm like, that's the thing you're proud of? Dude, you should be proud that you did that thing. Even if it's just like I got out of bed every day, because you know, COVID. And this stuff is weird and the political climate is weird and yeah, <laughs> the financial um, uh, environment is weird right now. So like, if you got out of bed every day, Go you. So anyway, it's been get, making me super happy today and I had a particularly rough day yesterday. What else is going on? I'm off camera because I'm cutting, so I'm just gonna keep talking though. Um, my two besties and their little girls and I and my husband went to a pumpkin patch oh, about a week and a half ago and that was delightful fun. We had such a good time with the girls. We took them to a corn maze and they we let them be in charge of getting us through the maze. <laughs> um, they actually did a pretty good job. Like we got fairly lost and then they're like, okay, we need the map. By the way, there's six. So they're like, we need the map. One of them is a very she's not a young six, she's just a six year old. But the other one is a very like old six so she's like we need the map and so we, I gave her the map and they were having a hard time figuring it out and it's because the map had a giant pumpkin on it and the number 2020 so you look at it like that but really the whole thing was upside down like the way you entered was up into it and the pumpkin actually faced the other way and they, because they're not accustomed to like trying to figure out, you know, if you saw like an N, a North on a map, you would just put the N up, right? So like they saw 2020 and read it as something that would indicate that that's up, I guess, because they're young, but they didn't look for the entrance to see like where the entrance was to go, oh, this is upside down. So they got a little confused, but actually they did a pretty good job of getting us out of there, which I am amazed by. Like six year olds are amazing. And they were born two weeks apart from each other and they are besties and it is the cutest thing ever. But it is amazing how unbelievably similar they are and how unbelievably different they are. Like there's things that they do that I like, they're identical. And then there's other things that they do that are so, so different. Like one of them, all she wants to do is talk to me. So when I go over there to hang out with my friend, I'm, I'm talking to my friend and she'll be like, can I talk to Noel now? And we're like, yeah, sure. What do you want to talk about? And then she's like, um, um, um. And then the other one, when I go over there, she's like, ugh, you guys are so boring. And then like leaves already. And I'm just like, wow, you are six going on 14. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I, I just find these things so fascinating and interesting and they are so fascinating and interesting and they tell me like the funniest things and even the one that thinks I'm super boring, like I'm not boring but me and her mom together are boring, um, she gets like apparently super hyped up when I'm about to come over and then when I ask her stuff she gets all like nervous about answering me and like she can't get her words out. It's just so cute, like I, I freaking love it. Being an auntie is the best because like you get all the joy of fun of like let's do their first corn maze together kind of stuff but then you don't have to put them to bed. <laughs> like that stuff's all just taken care of <laughs> and you don't have to deal with the meltdown you can just kind of wander off when that happens. Um, we, me and my two besties, we all took trips for our 40th birthdays which were all within the same year. Well mine was the January of the next year because they're like I don't know eight months older than me or five months older than me so one of them we went on this Alaskan cruise and it was so awesome because like I stayed in this tiny stateroom that was like an indoor no ports like the cheapest room you could get but it was literally across the hall from my one bestie who had like the captain's room or whatever like it was insane like it had a bathtub it had a like actual room that was like the size of my entire cabin for getting dressed in there was two rooms and a no, there's like two rooms like a bedroom and then like a big room that had like a lounge area and a full dining room in it it was nuts like absolutely for a ship it was crazy um 
And then my other bestie was just like, so we were on one side of the ship, but at the very front of the ship. And my other bestie was on the other side of the front. So like a hundred feet down the hall. It was, it was, they were awesome. Like it was so cool to be right there with them. Anyway, <laughs> that was awesome too. Cause I got to like go on trips with them. And like, I mean, we traveled together a lot, but that was a very intimate trip. And every time anything happened and there was a meltdown, I just could go, all right, I'm going to my room. I'll see you guys in a little bit. And I had a key to their room and a key to my room. So I would just like cruise across the hall and hang out in my bedroom and like not deal with children. And then when they were all like napped and better and whatever, I'd cruise back over there and be like, all right, let's go. You guys want to go see the circus thing tonight? It was adorable. Um, I don't know that any of us would probably like Necessi I, don't, I don't know, I might go on a cruise again, but like, they're really environmentally impactful. So, and it was really awesome to do it in that way because we were all trapped together. Like we had no choice but to hang out. Usually when we travel, we kind of all like go apart during the day and do whatever we want and then we meet up for dinner. But we couldn't really do that. We like, we had to hang out all the time. So it was like, that was awesome actually. And then, all, all the activities were scheduled together so you know we got to go to like the spa together and the boys took the girls for a little while like the, the the babies for a little while they're not babies they're six but they were they were four at the time so anyway it was just it was a it was a magical magical time so that was cool and then for my second bestie's birthday we went to Kauai and that was a weird trip because we were all separate from each other. Like we were all staying in the same house, but the house was really big. So we like didn't actually hang out that often, which was bizarre. And we were all on different sleep schedules. So, um, and all the, like the girls wanted to do different stuff. So we made time to make sure that we were together for some of it. Um, and that's where I found Keanu on that trip. So um, it's funny because on that Bessie's birthday, I got Keanu one year and then the next year we got Charlotte on that same weekend which is Labor Day weekend. Um, and then for my birthday, they came too. And then also we had a total of 22 people besides me and Chris. And we all went to Oahu, to Waikiki. And that trip was amazing because I basically stayed on resort. We just stayed at the Hilton Hawaiian Village, which is like the clichéest place you can stay and also if you have 22 people on a trip the best place you could possibly stay because they have like everything there and it's super accessible to Waikiki like everything's walkable the beach is like it's on the beach so it's right there it's fantastic they have their own firework show it's it's amazing um they have their own luau they have all their own stuff or you can go anywhere else you want so i basically stayed on resort and just chilled and then like every Every day I would just like wake up and be like, all right, who's hanging out? And like some group would be hanging out and it would be like, oh, we're at the pool or we're at the beach or whatever. And I'm like, all right, I'll come down there. Or we're, we're over at such and such having breakfast. I'm like, same me a spot. So I would just like roll over. And so there was probably nine different groups of people, maybe 10. And I would go like hang out with each group for a little bit of time. So I actually got to spend time with every single person that came on this trip. Like we got to hang out for a good like half day block together and then everybody also got to do all the stuff they wanted to do because like if they didn't want to hang out at the beach that day they wanted to go to some other location then that's fine go ahead like I'll just hang out with these people today or I'll come to the location with you whatever um so it was really cool it's a really great way to travel because everyone did what they want and then we met up I think there was three occasions in which all of us were together so we had my birthday dinner together we went to the luau hour together and then we also went to um the japanese temple together as a huge group so that was really awesome anyway i don't know how i got into this topic but the girls on that trip were also choice like they were super cute <laughs> like i can't even tell you how adorable they are they loved that trip they loved being with people they were probably the people who were the most like at um, the resort with me with too, which was cool because it meant I got to spend a lot of time like just at the pool with them and stuff Which was fun So anyway, I think I was saying that being an auntie is bomb Because <laughs> you get all the joys of parenthood without 
the consequences. <laughs> I very much enjoy that. This black is less than 100% desirable. Is this pink going to work out? Let's find out. This pen I'm using is pink. It's chalk. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Perfect. I didn't have anything to talk about, and somehow I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. I guess you guys are here for it, or you wouldn't be this deep into a normal video. So, I'm just assuming that's cool. What are you guys up to? What else did I do that was cool recently? Oh, so I told you I formed a bubble with one of my very good friends who lives alone, and I could not possibly make her be... So she had a roommate, and then her roommate moved out, like, maybe two months ago. And so she's just been kind of alone. And at some point, like, I think it was Chris's birthday, we had, we had my two besties' families over, and then my friend Sarah over for Chris's birthday dinner, and we did it outside. Everybody was masked. I set up, like, we have a big backyard, so I set up tables for everyone to be very far apart. And then I cooked Korean barbecue and then brought it to their table and then backed away and then they took their mouths off and ate. So we were very safe and we were outdoors, which <laughs> I love how like when you say you did something and literally, literally anything now, you have to like justify it to everybody that, that you're talking to. You have to be like, we did this and this and this and this and this is how we were safe. But um, I also don't want to deal with the comments. <laughs> we were super safe. Can we just have shorthand that was like, we did a socially distanced thing and we were safe. And everybody says, okay, I trust you. Is that a thing? I guess we probably can't because people aren't actually trustworthy sometimes. So at that point, we decided to make a bubble with Sarah, I think I told you guys. And I'm super happy about that. She came over the other day, um, last Saturday, and we voted together. And we spent, I think, three and a half hours voting. So we were looking up all the people in our area. And she actually lives in a different city than I do. So she had different people for a bunch of her stuff, but we live in the same county, so we had the same stuff for that. Anyway, it was so nice to like be in the so when my besties come over, she comes over, she came over that time, like we don't hug each other. Like we I mean I, I hugged Abby. And that was the only other human besides my husband that I have hugged since I hugged Peggy eight months ago, nine months ago, some some eight months ago, some really long time ago. So, anyway, when we decided to go into a bubble together, we were like, okay, we're going to be completely transparent about where we've been, what we've been doing, we're going to make sure that we're not taking unnecessary risks, all that stuff. But that also means that we get, she gets to be in my house unmasked. And we, and we're, we stood there for like five minutes going, do we hug? And then I'm like, screw it. Let's hug. Um, so... <sighs> It was so nice just to hug another human being. And she's like, I haven't hugged anyone that isn't my family for like <laughs> years now. <laughs> so it was really like, it was sad and good and bad and like all the things all at once. But I'm really glad that that is a thing now. She's going to come over for Halloween. I don't know if kids are going to trick or treat. Does anybody have thoughts on that? Um, the people down the road told me that, yeah, kids are totally going to be, like, at least milling around in the, the street in their costumes. I don't know if they'll trick-or-treat or not. I'm kind of considering, someone said, like, they're going to put candy in separate bags and then staple the bag shut and then put the bags, like, all over their yard to let the kids, like, come take one or whatever or, like, on a table so kids can come take one but not have to, like, ring the doorbell or whatever. So... I don't know. The whole thing stresses me out. So <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do. Sarah's come over every year for like the last, I don't know, like four or five, four years, three years, some, some, a lot of years. And we watch stuff on Halloween, usually Hocus Pocus and then Night Before Christmas because that's how we roll. Although Disney Club has Nightmare Before Christmas the night before, but like, honestly, I can watch that movie over and over and over and over again. It is in fact... One of my two favorite movies. The other of which is Fight Club, <laughs> which is the opposite movie to that. Um, I have to bite this, hang on. So 
so I can watch that over and over again. So that'll be fine. But she's coming over on on that day and I am super hype again just to have like any different human hang out at our house is so excited. Like we have a pretty big house and we have one that has like an open floor plan downstairs that is just like dying for company. Like it is primo made for parties and we have a lot of people over usually. We're very social as you can tell because I have a YouTube channel where I just talk to you guys for an hour. Um, so <laughs> uh, it's kind of like that's one of the things that sucks the most about this is that I can't just like have people over whenever I want. And we used to have like we had people over at least once a week. It's a thing that kept our house clean. <laughs> now our house isn't clean all the time because we don't have to clean up because people aren't coming over. So yeah, it's really good that that's happening. I'm really excited about it. Do you guys have a bubble? Let me know about your bubble situation. It's harder because you have to trust another person and you have to find one that's like equally as paranoid as you are, but it's kind of nice. I really like it. I wish I could have more people in my bubble, but that's too much. Like you can't risk that. So now Sarah's considered my household, which is great. Okay, I have caught this. I'm gonna go sew this. All right, so I prepped this fabric exactly like I did. I flatlined it just so it would look exactly the same. And this is what the, the micro piping I'm calling it looks like. Um, it has like waviness to it that I'm not hype about. So I think I need to practice my piping a little bit more. So I like it. I'm going to show it to Constance tonight when she wakes up, which is, what time is it? It's 1.25, so she's already awake. So I can go ask her what she thinks. Um, so right now it's between this one and this one. I don't think I like the triple, but I might make one of triple of this just to see. And then I'm probably going to sleep on it and make the decision about it tomorrow, but it doesn't matter because I'm not doing all the piping, um, until the next video essentially, like later this week, maybe this weekend. And then I'm going to make a lot of piping <laughs> and, and, and do piping. So that's what's happening. I've sort of eliminated like that end of the spectrum, but here's this one, so yeah. With regard to what's getting piped, okay, so I'm definitely piping the bottom of the jacket, so it would look like that on the bottom, where it's just like a little accent, or that, where it's a little bit more like, how can I have an eye on this? There we go. So it would look like that. One of the two of those. I kind of like this one better. So that's a thing. So we're doing the entire bottom. I do think I am going to do up the front. Um, my hesitation with that is that it has a mandarin collar, which I will pipe the edge of, which is not will look really nice. But where it meets right here... It's probably going to be a little squidgy because the mandarin collar goes inside it when it's lined. So it basically has to get piped completely separately. It's treated as like not part of this, you see. So there will be a break between the end of where this piping ends and the other one begins. And I'm like, is that weird? Is that going to look awful? Should I not do the front of this? So I'm going to talk about that with Constance. Um, I'm definitely going to do the cuffs, but the cuffs are going to be gold, so I think I'm just going to single pipe them in black. And I think I'm actually going to do the bottom edge one row of piping and the top edge of the cuff one row of piping. And that will look very similar to how it's black, yellow, black on the skirt below. And then I'm also considering doing these two seams. Because I think that might look cool, but I'm also going to talk to Constance about that. So I'm going to, I'm going to call my consultant basically and see what she thinks. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's happening. Um, I will sleep on that and figure it out. I'm going to probably go talk to her and then I'll come back and tell you what she said. Okay. So what is up with this situation? I talked to Constance. She validated basically everything I said I wanted to do. She likes the tiny piping. It's all good. So I'm going to run with this, which means I'm ending this blog here. Yeah. I accomplished my goals. I'm done and I feel good about that. Um, so the next time I sew on this, this will be jacket construction and like mad piping marathon. So cool. Should be awesome. And then we move on to hats. 
fun times. All right. So I will see you guys next time with another vlog. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. If you are new here, please go down in the comments and introduce yourself and let me know all about you. And if you're not new here, then comment down below and tell me what you're listening to. I moved on to another book, by the way, because that one was super short. I'm listening to Ink and Sigil by Kevin Hearn, who also writes the Iron Druid Chronicles. And this is in the same world as the Iron Druid. Um, but it's about a guy who is magical in that he writes sigils with magic ink and those sigils do magical things. <laughs> so I'm learning about him now. So that's what's happening in this book and I'm enjoying it so far because he has the same reader who is Luke Daniels. I love Luke Daniels as a reader, by the way. So, okay, I will see you guys next time with another vlog. I think there'll be another 20 questions pretty soon. I believe Constance is up next. Um, and yeah, have a great day, guys. Bye.